Hello and welcome to Market Psychology 101, where we look for value in the markets when there's fear and are cautious when there's greed. Today's video, I wanted to do something different. Instead of just keeping you up to date on where the prices are for any specific cryptos, mining stocks, or the markets in general, I wanted to share with you my personal strategy on how and when I invest or trade vest into stocks and crypto. So please know everything I say here just for educational purposes, take or leave from it what you want and nothing I say is financial advice. This is what I've done, this is what works for me. It does not mean that this will continue to work. So disclaimer, once again, Nothing here is financial advice, just for education and entertainment purposes. So let's dive into it. The essential question, how or when do I buy into stocks and cryptos? And I'm gonna make this more of a crypto-centric video. So with that being said, when it comes to stocks or crypto, I'll, I'll say something that applies for both. Of course, you have to do your own research, make sure that you know enough about the stock and crypto for you to put your hard earned money into it. If you have not done your research, obviously you should not be blinding putting your money into that asset. So please do your own research. When it comes to stocks, I ask the simple questions of, is this gonna be around in 20 years? I believe Apple will be around in 20 years. Okay, great. My next questions are, is this something I like and use? So Apple, yes, it is a product I like. It's a product I use, and so I believe it's going to be around in 20 years. This is one I'll look into buying, and we'll get into the indicators and other factors. The last thing I'll say about the stocks is you can look at their financials, their balance sheets. So make sure that the assets to liabilities is a positive ratio. If it's a negative ratio, you're taking more of a risk. The more positive ratio of assets to liabilities, the better. You can go on Market Watch, find any of those details there. Let's go over and talk about crypto. So when it comes to putting money into any stocks or crypto, I need to say this, I'd hope it goes without saying, but I need to say this, do not invest more than you can afford to lose. So please set yourself a budget that you can afford. Everyone's budget is a little bit different. And so maybe you can only budget $100 a month. Maybe you can do 1,000, 10,000. I don't know, you have to find what works best for you, but I encourage you not to overextend yourself so you can still afford your bills and anything else you might need in an emergency in your daily life. Please don't be someone that just puts it all, all your money, your tuition money into a crypto because crypto is very volatile and I am not ever going to be on the record encouraging any of you guys to do that. So please be smart with your money. Could you find 100X and turn 10K into a million? Sure, but I don't find that to be as likely. If you're to do that, you are assuming your own risk. So again, step one, do your own research. Step two, make sure you have a budget. Step three, this is another very easy step that I use. It's just pay attention. That'll be step three, pay attention. If Ethereum is one of your top cryptos, then just take a look at it once a week. It only takes a minute or two. And whatever indicators you have on, if you just look at it once a week, just for a minute, you can answer the question right away. Is it at a value I like or is it not at a value I like? If it is, then you can feel comfortable dollar cost averaging into it. And that's what I do for my budget. Let's just say for pretend sake, and this is not my budget, but let's say my budget is $1,000 a month. From that $1,000, and again, I'm going to diversify. Let's say I have five cryptos, Ethereum, Link, and three mining stocks. And so $200 per month is going across the board, or maybe one's at deep value that I'm going to put all the $1,000 from that monthly budget into. Well, if it's at a deep value that I like, and we'll get into the indicators, great. I can put in money into it. I, I can buy into it. So just by paying attention, you will have an advantage over most people out there. Most retail is not paying attention until we get to these cycle tops. That's when you hear friends and family and random people you know talking about crypto when we are at the cycle top. I think this part goes back to the do your own research, but this is something you don't have to spend 
a lot of time doing, even though I do videos on this every week. And that is just looking at some of the macro indicators, at least for crypto. Are we in deep value areas or are we overextended into high value areas? What's the social risk? Where are we with the alt season chart? Are we extended or not? If we are, obviously you shouldn't be buying. If your altcoin is at all time highs, you probably shouldn't be buying. But if it's at lows and you're, you've done your research, then maybe you feel strongly enough, you've done your research to put into it. But again, you only need to check these macro indicators, in my opinion, maybe once every two or three months. That's it. And just answer the simple question. Are we in good value or high value areas? Right now we're in decent value areas. It's all you need to know. That's probably not going to change within the next month or two. It typically doesn't. But if you check, you maybe you check it once a month and you're like, okay, it's in high value. I have to be very careful. Next, again, I talk about this all the time because I work in the field of psychology and that's using our emotions as an indicator. And nothing's better than fear and greed. Warren Buffett famously has been quoted saying, be uh, greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. So when we're at extreme greed, you want to be careful about buying. Now, this is with stocks. And does this affect all stocks? No. But let's say in the world of crypto, we are at, ex at extreme greed. So maybe you're not buying in to Bitcoin as much, but maybe maybe you have an altcoin that is, a, that is at a deeper value. Sure, there might still be altcoins at a good value for you to buy, but when we are in extreme greed, you definitely want to be cautious, okay? Again, this only takes a few seconds to look at some of these things. And as far as really using fear and greed as an indicator, guys, the reason this is so powerful, before you're even born, I'll teach you a quick little uh, neuroscience here, your limbic system in your brain is really the first part of your brain to develop. And that's the areas associated with emotion. That's why babies are always crying or super happy or just chill because they are operating out of their limbic system. The whole fight, flight, freeze modes right there. That's why it's important to keep younger kids safe, let the brains develop in a healthy way. But our emotions really, they're the most primal part of our brains or some of the most outside of obviously uh, the parts of your brain that have to do with your senses, but I digress. The, the last part of your brain that really develops is your frontal lobe and how we take in information, how we process information. And so just having a plan, okay, this is another step, having a plan, having a strategy is way more important in making money than it is being right or wrong with predictions. So many crypto YouTubers, people on X care way more about their predictions than they do the strategy. And I want to make sure I share uh, this information about a strategy because, you know, comment below, by the way, when my video is done and you've heard everything, what parts of my strategy you like, what parts you think don't work or could be better, and maybe even some of strategies of your own. And again, when I do my videos, I want to make sure that the strategies, the indicators that I use are simple enough things for anyone to understand or use. So I know there's lots of different strategies out there that some go over my head, like Elliott Wave Theory, because there's all these specific conditions. I haven't done enough research to even know what I'm talking about with Elliott Wave Theory. And even if I watch someone else's videos on Elliott Wave Theory, I still cannot replicate that on my own without watching someone else's content. And I have to trust their content to an extent to make my own financial decision. Now I'm uncomfortable with that and I would never tell any of you to just make your financial decisions based off my content. Again, you are making your own choices at the end of the day on what you are buying and how much you are putting into that. I am not responsible for any of those financial decisions. Hence the disclaimer in every video. So again, make sure that you've done your own research and that you are looking at those good areas to buy when it comes to fear and greed. Okay, we, we, we covered that. Let's get into indicators for an example. Well, one of the first indicators that you can use, and you don't even need an indicator for this. Let's go over to link here because I deleted the fib. And let's actually, let's turn this off for a second. Answer this simple question. Are we within 
the range of the yearly lows or the yearly highs. Take a look at the last year. Let's say Link is uh, a crypto I like a lot. I've done my research. Well, it's within the lows and not the highs. And so there is better value to buy down here. Now, not all charts are going to look like this where there's they're going sideways or higher lows accumulation whatever you're not always going to find that great value all the time and again there's no guarantee any of these will go up but i like the value of link more than i do bitcoin right now bitcoin in the range of yearly highs i am not buying bitcoin right now okay simple question you can answer right there so again we've talked about paying attention talked about fear and greed um, doing your own research, making sure you know the conditions, but the, the macro conditions you just have to have in the back of your head, okay? And I've also talked about make sure that I'm using indicators that any of you out there can use or very easily understand. Let's get into some of those indicators, okay? The first one, I think this is one of the best ones, is just the EMA, the 2050, 100, 200. I don't like taking a look at that on the daily when I'm making my financial decisions. I like to take a look at this on the weekly or the monthly. And on the weekly or monthly, when it's at these lower moving averages, if it is a product I really like and I believe in, then I am going to look at dollar cost averaging in when it's at those deeper values or below those deeper values. So if you really like Ethereum and you are buying Ethereum, when it was at or below those moving averages, and you really believed in it, then when it got above in the bull run, then you knew or you had your plan, yet you wrote out your price targets. Again, I'll, I'll keep coming back to this one. Make sure you have a strategy written out or price targets written out so you know where you're taking profits, you know, what percentage where, you know, maybe you take 50% at 2,000 and another 25% at 3,000 and another 25% at 4,000, whatever it is. Make sure you have your targets so you can use your frontal lobe to enact your plan and your strategy instead of emotion setting in and you being greedy and staying in longer than you should. So going back to Ethereum, if you like those deep values, you got in down here. It was extended, you, you hit your profit targets, you took profits, okay? What your profit targets are, that's gonna be up to you as far as where you think it's gonna go. You can take a look at market cap, you can take a look at the FIB. This is an indicator I use outside of just the moving averages. This one I drew from the high to the low, okay? And when you draw from the high to the low, crypto, I like taking a look at it on the log scale if you don't know what log scale means it, it just goes up by factors of 10 and you can take your fib off log scale when you draw from high to low to see some higher price targets so this is how i look at some higher price targets okay i've already done my research i've gone back in the past to see what fibs as ethereum hit before seeing how each time it tends to hit a fib target that's a little bit lower than the time before so i try to have realistic targets and say you know what if it got there what would the market cap be that makes sense i will take a percent of profits you know here here whatever okay so we talked about the moving averages we talked about the fibs another thing i'll say about moving averages is you can take a look at anything i'll go to a, a stock here in a moment sorry about the cat feeder in the background <laughs> But we were talking about Apple, one of the stock videos not long ago. I said, you know, what moving average does Apple like as far as the weekly? It likes hitting the 100 a lot. And then I went back in time the last 10, 15 years, said, how often is it at or below the 100? And really, it only happens once every two years. So I said, this is a good value, rare time to buy. It's at that level, maybe worth getting into. And it turned out to be where the bottom was. Other stocks... You know, like 3M, this one was way below. You had to go to, this is a good dividend stock. And you can see, well, it loves the 200-month moving average as far as deep value. And it got way below that. So I said, you know what? I like it as a dividend stock. Maybe I'll consider buying in. And I say this all the time uh, in my videos that if you like something enough to get in here, let's say you see how 3M here has lower highs. 
even if it goes down and makes another lower low, and let's say it gets somewhere like 60 bucks, you can see that's where these bottoms were. Let's say it goes to 60 bucks. Well, if I liked a stock or crypto enough to get in down here, I need to love getting in down here. So again, pay attention, use your emotions as an indicator. If that were to happen, there'd be extreme fear. But again, you know, when I say this, I'm assuming all the other things have already been done. The research has already been done. Obviously, you're not going to want to buy a dying stock if it's just uh, if the writing's on the wall and it's too much of a risk. Of course, you'll have to make adjustments to your plan and you want to do your research. Just a few minutes of research, maybe like 10 to 30 minutes, you know, skimming the Internet. You do as much research as you want. But if the writing's on the wall, let's say it's going bed, bath and beyond style down here, then, of course, that's why it's important to diversify. So just those things, knowing those things, I should already know that right now. And I feel I've done the research to do that, that if I like it here, I can love it when it's down there. Same thing with crypto. OK, in the world of crypto, if let's zoom way in here, we're on the monthly. So I like taking a look at the weekly as well. So if I liked crypto enough to buy it here, even if it goes down to the hundred, I should love buying it there. That is okay, in my opinion. Other indicators I use, we talked about the moving averages, we talked about the fibs, just the simple move, the simple indicator of is it within a yearly high or a low? How about buy sell signals? Very simple. This is a leading indicator buy sell signal. You can see the green dots, red dots. Okay, this is on the weekly. And after we come out of a bear market where uh, you can see this is monthly. Once we come out of a bear market, I take a look at the next monthly buy signal. I want to be sure there's this buy signal, the 1020 MA uh, crossover with Heikinashi signals. That's more of a leading indicator, a lagging indicator that I also like. It's UT bot alerts. Okay, this one a little bit later, but again, it's more confirming. Depends how much risk you're willing to take. Um, so do know that. But that can just confirm, OK, maybe you put in a little bit when the first buy signal comes out. And then when the next one comes in, you've, you're comfortable putting in more. Um, but I talk about the, the way I talk about buy sell signals and I only like using them on the monthly uh, or weekly for buying. When it comes to selling, I'm taking a look at the weekly or daily. If I believe something's very overextended, I rarely go to the daily, but when I'm buying something, I'm I'm trying to build a profit sandwich all the time in the world of crypto, because you guys know crypto. We talk about this every week. It moves in these big cycles, you know, deep value uh, way. The value is way overextended. Deep value. the value, It's way overbought. OK, when I take a look at areas to take profit, I'm trying to build a profit sandwich when I'm buying in, when I'm selling I dollar cost average in values I like. And I take profits at the areas that are overextended. And when I'm looking at a profit sandwich, let's actually let's switch this up. I'm going to use more. I'm going to use the other buy sell signal indicator just because this is more uh, confirming. And here you can see it. Let's uh, hide this right now. So let's say you bought in somewhere in this buy signal down here. OK, you hadn't seen a weekly buy signal in a while. Let's say you got near the bottom. You waited a long time for a buy signal. You bought the first one, you know, you were Convinced this has got to be close to the bottom. I bought in here, here, here. Cool. And after Bitcoin had that great run in March, maybe sold in the sell signal. Okay. I didn't. I believe in the cycle. I believe bigger highs are coming next year. We'll see if that plays out. But anyways, if you bought your dollar cost average in and out, then your average buy would be somewhere between here. I'll go closer to the upper ones. And then the sell signals were kind of in here you can make 144% total profit. So you're not eating the bread, the sandwich, you're just eating all the guts in the middle. Now I know you don't get the very bottom and the very top. And you know, you may have dollar cost averaged in a little bit at that very bottom, but again, you're DCA and more here. Yes, you're missing out on some profits, but as far as I know, there is no absolute way to find every high and low on every asset Yes, there is. I know some of you guys are going to be saying, oh, what about the pie cycle indicator for Bitcoin? Yes, this has been true so far. OK, this has been an indicator. And again, this 
This indicator you're only using once every two to four years to find the high and the low or anything near it. This one, it didn't even call the true high, even though it's close enough for all season. And it didn't call the true low, but we had a black swan event at the bottom. So I'd say this is still a success. There's no guarantee, especially with diminished returns, that this will continue to flash, especially when you're taking a look at other altcoins. Okay, other altcoins aren't going to signal the pi cycle high low. All right, let's go over to an altcoin, Ethereum, all right? So we talked about moving averages, where the deeper value is. And again, when you hear terms like bear market, again, that's going to trigger people's emotions. They're not going to keep paying attention. Fear is going to be in the market. I, When I see extreme fear, I am really looking at buying more uh, whatever assets, stocks or cryptos. And there are times, so right now, everything's up in green. Okay. Let's go over this. Everything's up in greed or extreme greed, all right? Stocks and crypto. It's all in extreme greed, but I've been buying in at areas where there was extreme fear, like down here. Not Ethereum, but it was an extreme fear when that yen carry trade sold off when the VIX was spiked, all right? So there's those two, there's those three in the carries. Fear and greed, moving averages. We talked about the Fib. We talked about the buy sell signals, okay? Are there any other indicators that I like to use? The ones, the other ones I like, and there is a list up here, and some of these I, I rarely check. Again, they, they may be indicators I look at once every six months to a year, uh, but that's the strength indexes. So the relative strength index is one, all right? Is it oversold? Is it overbought? Now that's not always perfectly correlated to where the price is, but with the indicators, you can look for something called uh, bearish divergence or bullish divergence. I, I want to find a good example of that for you. Of uh, Here we go. This is bearish divergence. Lower strength, higher price. And it doesn't always roll over that quickly. But you can see here that when you see consistent bearish divergence forming, higher price again, lower strength, it, it's not surprising to see it go down. Okay. Now, bullish divergence is when it's oversold, and it, it doesn't have to be all the way under 30, but all of a sudden you see a reverse in the trend where the bases are getting higher. If the bases are getting higher, now the price is getting higher too, so that's just bullish, at least in this time frame. But let's say the price goes lower again, but the strength only goes down to here. Well, if we have higher strength and the price goes lower, that's bullish divergence. So that's another thing I look for on strength and again, that doesn't always come into play. Um, this, the stochastic RSI, I love using this on the weekly as far as a dollar cost averaging strategy. And this one, very simple. When it gets in the oversold area and flips positive, that tends to be a very good time to DCA. Okay, so not here. It's not quite oversold, even though that would have been a fine time to buy. But down here, yes, it's at a higher price. Down here, here, here. Okay, what did I say before? If you like buying something here, you need to love buying it here. So I like Link a lot. And even though I could have bought up here, or maybe I did buy up here, or maybe I didn't. I can't remember. If I did, then just going by my strict DCA strategy, if I bought it up here, I need to love buying it down here because it, it, it is at more of a discount. And there was a lot of fear in the market here. So again, stochastic RSI flipping positive after fears in the market, I do that as well. Another reason I look for it to flip positive uh, or the buy signals is just so you don't catch a falling knife like back here. So here you could have been buying the stochastic RSI here. But again, we talked about buy sell signals. We talked about moving averages. When you're going underneath the 50 week moving average, then typically there or at least um, you'll know there's a higher chance that it's going to roll over and go a lot lower. So the weekly tends to be a good dividing line between a bull market and a bear market. And if it's going lower, you need to be extra careful, extra cautious. Do know that the money you put in is at greater risk of, or at least in crypto, you're at greater risk of holding on to those bags for a while and not seeing profits for a while. Okay, so if it starts to break under the 50, 
then you take that risk. Now here, obviously got underneath that was deep value. That is March 2020. Again, black swan event. So a little bit different. It otherwise, it's holding the 50 week up to here. And then here you could have got out. Even if you're buying at all these other moving averages or stochastic areas. So I take a look at all those factors on when I'm dollar cost averaging in, when I'm buying. So again, quick recap, do your own research when it comes to cryptos. It Do enough research that you will like buying in at deeper value, even if you loved, if you liked buying in here, then you need to love buying in at deeper value. That's what I meant to say. Set a budget, make sure that whatever budget is something you can afford and that you're not putting yourself um, in, into uh, gray areas of financial risk. I'm trying to share as much as I can to reduce risk as much as possible. Now it's hard, you can't make money off crypto or stocks unless you have skin in the game, unless you put your money where your mouth is. So if you've done your research, you believe then that there is always gonna be some level of risk, okay? Paying attention, just paying attention. Once a week, maybe you have five to 10 cryptos or mining stocks you like, just pay attention. Once a week, just check, where is it? Where is it in the range? Buy, sell, signal, stochastic RSI, flipping positive. Okay, that's a good thing. Buy, sell, signal, moving averages. Okay, it's at the moving averages. Good value, buy, signal, great. Hit the stochastic, it's at good moving averages. We have a buy, signal, all good things. Even the, you know, the fibs that we were talking about before. Okay, again, drawing a fib, a high to the low. It's still at overall deep value. It's not at all-time high territory. We know the macro conditions aren't at all time high territory. The pay attention one, probably one of the most important. Fear and greed, very easy to check, okay? When we're in extreme fear, look for confirmation of the turnaround. Again, you don't wanna catch a falling knife, so we look for the buy signals, the stochastic RSI. We look for the strengths to show bullish divergence. I showed you guys what that looks like. I showed you what bullish and bearish divergence looks like. Again, I'm looking at budgeting every month. And if, let's say I have a thousand dollar budget, with which I don't, let's say everything is way overvalued. I do not have to spend that money. I can pull that for future months when more value returns to any of my stocks or cryptos. Okay, we talked about the different indicators. The Fibonacci retracement has the different percentages that you can see the Fib loves to bounce off and act off of, okay, the, the FIB's very useful tool. Okay, we, I believe I talked about it in the video. Let me just refresh just in case. You can take a look at price targets by taking your FIB off log scale. But again, make sure the market cap, the overall value, like if you want Link to hit, um, or no, Mara, sorry. If you want Mara to hit two to 300 bucks, calculate the market cap, make sure that's a reasonable amount and an amount that it can be hit uh, or has been hit in the past by this mining stock before um, it, and that you're not just throwing out, that you're not just going off wishful thinking. Well, I hope this 100X is, so I, I would love to hit this target, okay? You, you wanna be realistic with your price targets as far as if you're looking, if and when you're looking to take profits where those numbers might be, okay? And what percentage they might be and how you will react if it doesn't hit that, let's say Bitcoin hits the peak in the macro scale, we get up to the orange red area, Bitcoin hits its peak and your altcoin or your mining stock doesn't hit the 2618, but it's at the 1618, then you might have to consider, okay, make sure you have that in your plan now with your thinking brain. So when it's an emotional time, extreme greed, that you aren't just holding on to hope because last I checked, hope is not a replicable good indicator that you know what to do in case your numbers doesn't get hit. Maybe you're thinking of taking 25% profit here, 25% profit here, 50% here. Let's say that doesn't happen, okay? Make sure you have a plan. Well, I'm okay taking out the rest here, whatever, okay? So we talked about FIBs, we talked about moving averages, buy, sell signals, strength, stochastic, regular RSI, um, and all those. There are other indicators I use but just keeping it simple, when I'm checking myself personally, just for five or 10 minutes a week, now I do these videos, so obviously I check it more and I talk everything to death. Uh, but when I'm just looking at this and not talking to you guys, but just looking at it myself, I'm doing all that inside of five minutes. I got my list of stuff. 
link, I can check it in five minutes, okay? I click on link. Let's say I've never drawn a fib, but this is one I like, okay? Click on link, look at the fib, all right? Looking at the moving averages. I like the moving averages right now, the deep value it's at. I like that, let's say again, this is an altcoin I really love, okay? It's at the 382, wish it had more strength. It doesn't, it has a sell signal. I'm not buying uh, quite yet, but if I did buy in down here, Okay, then maybe I consider taking that risk and just dollar cost averaging in a little bit. But if it does go lower, I might save some of my budget to buy if it gets down to the 236 again. Maybe I set a buy order for a certain amount of money at this FIB level at 866. Okay, you can see it wicked to there and it bounced right back up. Okay, maybe that's some things I'm looking for. All right, I could look at the stochastic RSI, see if that's flip positive, and then I'm done. Okay, all that takes less than a minute. I already knew where the fear and greed and the macro uh, charts were. I know we're not overbought. I know that uh, there's still plenty of room to run on the uh, Bitcoin rainbow chart and all the macro cycles, all right? So anyways, please comment below what you think of my personal strategy, what you like, what you don't like, and what you do differently. I'd love to hear from you guys. And, and again, all constructive criticism and feedback is welcome. This is just what I do. I try to do it simply, quickly. Um, again, I'll say in the world of crypto, when you do your own research, be careful of CNBC and other sites with the FUD or uh, the FOMO when they're saying great things. It tends to be when the market's doing great. You know, mining stocks, I, I'll re I remember they were saying great things about mining stocks. This is no joke that when mining stocks were ripping up, in what was it february march of this year i said well the halving's coming up so uh you know that's going to me mean half the amount of bitcoin is uh being mined that's going to create a supply crunch that's bullish for miners it, there are articles right in here saying that right at the top when it started to go down you know what the art the same websites were saying in their articles i said well the halving happened now half the amount of bitcoins being mined so they're half as valuable i kid you not it happened just like that Bullish news articles here, bearish news articles here. So when I, when I saw that, I just had to laugh. You know, CNBC sucks for so many reasons, but just add another one to the list. Um, but again, you have to do your own research in the world of crypto. Take everything they say with a grain of salt. The, every project is solving a problem that doesn't exist, it seems. And they will promise you the world and sunshines, rainbows, and unicorns. And guys, I've been in crypto since 2017. Made great money both cycles. Could have made a lot more of the cycle if I wasn't stupid. Uh, <laughs> I, I got greedy and I didn't have a plan. And that is part of the reason I made this challenge. Because again, having a plan and a strategy that is risk averse and smart is more important than being right. Okay, Everyone has a prediction. Doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. What matters is making money. But I've been in here since then. And I've seen hundreds of altcoins and projects that promise the moon and don't exist anymore. And from here, how many altcoins are still around that I remember? I remember Doge being talked about, but no one took it seriously back here. 21's when it took off. Cardano, XRP, what else? Obviously, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, Litecoin, that didn't perform as well. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, you know, that one's kind of around, but dying. There, there's Dragon Chain back here. There's so many altcoins back here that don't exist here. And... The same thing for 2021 altcoins is probably going to happen again this time around. And the altcoins that do great this time around, you're probably going to see it again next cycle. Where newer projects, newer altcoins disappoint. And so whatever you do your research on, you really want to see that the, the odds are likely that it'll still perform well enough for you to make good profits. So just take anything, any of these crypto projects say with a grain of salt a lot of them promise great things back here and i don't see them anymore and i saw the same thing here and a lot of their charts look absolutely dead and no more money's flowing into them anymore so guys i hope you enjoyed the video thank you for watching have a wonderful weekend take care